Welcome everyone. Today I'm talking about AutoGPT, which is taking the internet by storm. There's a million news articles, blog posts, TikToks about it, how you need to start freaking out and how it's going to change the world. Uh, I'm not sure I buy into all of that, but in this video, we're going to explore it. We'll do a couple of examples. I'll show you how to install it and how to get it running. And uh, it's a pretty good time. If you're interested in learning more about uh, GPT-4, you can check out my course I just released. There's a coupon in the description. As far as AutoGPT, if you're not familiar familiar with it, the concept behind it is that it's an attempt to make GPT-4 fully autonomous. Basically, we can set a task, like the two that I'm going to do are uh, asking it to collect emails of the top coding YouTubers, and also the second task I'm asking it to do in this video is to generate uh, some code files and write tests for those code files. You give it some sort of prompt like that, and then it keeps trying at that prompt over and over and develops a strategy and a plan. And uh, well, let me just show you how it works. This is the AutoGPT GitHub repository. The first step, of course, is to download it. And you might think we should just clone the repo like you would for any other repository. However, uh, the readme makes it clear that you should not do that. You should use the latest stable release uh, because there's often break and ch breaking changes on the master branch. So there's a couple of options here. One is to just download uh, the stable release as some sort of zip or tar file and then navigate to that. The other option is to clone this repo, but clone the stable branch specifically. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's a git clone, and then instead of just pasting the URL, I specify with dash b that I wanna clone the stable branch. Okay, so now I have a folder called auto GPT. If I navigate into it, we see some stuff. The next step is to install all of the dependencies. So using pip install dash r for, for the requirements.txt file, this might take a moment. Okay, that finished up. Next, what we need to do is add in our OpenAI API key and any other API keys we want uh, AutoGPT to have access to. So there's a hidden file in here called .env.template. What we wanna do is make a copy of that template.env file and fill it with our own uh, information. So that should make us, using the cp command, a copy of it called .env. And if we look at it, we really just want to open it. But if you look at it, uh, it's in the format of an environment variable file. We need to fill in our environment variables. So I'm going to open .env up. Okay, here it is. So most of it is commented out, but by far the most important piece to fill in is your actual OpenAI API key. As you can see right here, you need to put your actual API key right there. Now, I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm also going to show you there are some other things you can enable. There's quite a few things you can enable. I'm not going to worry about for now. If you wanted to have access to the Google APIs, you can put the Google API key in there if you have one. Uh, if you wanted to have text-to-speech, you can add in 11 labs API keys. There's many other things you can configure, different vector data stores that it will use. But the one you have to have is the OpenAI API key. And once you've saved that file, we're ready to go. So in the main directory of AutoGPT, to run it, we need to execute dot slash run dot sh. Looks like it's getting some other dependency here. Now the first step is to enter in a name for whatever our assistant is going to be. Why don't we uh, create an assistant that will find email addresses for the top coding YouTubers out there? So I'm going to call it the email finder AI or something like that. We'll call it email finder GPT. And then I need to give it some sort of uh, directive, what its role is. So I'll say it's an AI designed to find the emails of the top, I don't know, 10 coding YouTubers and save them to a file. And then I can give it uh, up to five individual goals. So I'll just elaborate on what I just said. Find the emails of the top 10 coding YouTubers um, and then save the emails to a file. And then if I hit enter again without entering a goal, it will start. So it begins. And I'm currently not running it in continuous mode, which means that I'm going to have to agree and approve every step along the way, which is generally a good idea because it can get very expensive if you do put it in continuous mode. All right, so it develops a plan. 
use Google to search for the names of the top 10 coding YouTubers. Once I find their names, I can use Browse website to look for their email addresses. I will save their email addresses to a file using the write to file command. Sounds like a good plan to me. So I'm going to tell it yes with Y. I can tell it no with N, or I can give it other feedback to try and change what it does. So if I just give it a Y for yes, so it looks like it's actually just doing a Google search. And then it found an article on careerkarma.com. Okay, let's see. Let's just allow it to proceed. It says, the top coding YouTubers are, like, are likely to have their own websites and it's possible they have listed their email addresses there. However, I need to be careful to only use reliable sources. So it does have a list of the top 10. Now it's gonna go through each one and look for their email address. So I can also allow it to run continuously using this syntax. Y and then dash a number. So I'll allow it to run 10 times. This way it won't just go unchecked forever, but up to 10 individual cycles. Okay, so you can see it's looking for Brad Traversy's email address, I believe. So eventually this did finish. Uh, it took about seven or eight minutes. Um, I'll just show you some of the, the work that it did. Uh, it did a lot of Google searching and for each of the individual YouTubers that it found, it tried to find their emails individually. And then eventually it will start to write to file. As you can see, like right here, command write to file. So it says, I have the list of the top 10 related coding related YouTubers and their emails. I'll write to file. And then it writes to the file. So you might be wondering, where is that file? It's not anywhere in this folder. It's nested by default in a folder called auto GPT workspace. You can actually configure this. But if I CD into it, there it is, top 10 YouTubers.txt. Or I'll just show it to you in my text editor. Here it is. So again, I probably should have said the top 10 YouTubers by number of subscribers, um, but still, it looks like it found the media general contact emails for each individual YouTuber or account, um, and it's, it's not bad. You know, it, it took a little while, but still, it, it did work. All right, I'm going to try another example that's a bit more complex. I'm asking it to be a uh, coding exercise generating assistant that will write a uh, text description for an exercise testing Python classes for students, if they can write a Python class. I want it to write starter code, save it to a file, write solution code, save it to a file, write tests to test the solution and write them to a file. And then I'll set it off and let's see how it goes. And this time I'll set it to continuous mode and I'm gonna walk away. I'll have it run for up to 30 cycles. Okay, so I stopped it from running any further. It was still going, but it got into this nasty loop where it kept writing files and then deleting them and then rewriting them and then deleting them. So it kind of got off the rails a little bit. Um, and there was also some bugs I ran into. Um, it, it does not like updating a file that already exists. It gives me this system error over and over. It doesn't seem to be stopping it from working, but it does complain a lot. Uh, and there's a, a couple of pull requests open to try and fix this issue on the uh, original repo. It, it's very early on in this project's life. There's a lot of bugs still. With that said, let me show you what it did. So um, it made a couple of files pretty much exactly what I was asking it to do. It created a text file explaining the exercise. Uh, it wants uh, the students to write a Python class for a bank account that has methods for deposit, withdrawal, and check balance. Um, there's instructions. There's a starter file here that has some comments where you would add the methods if you're a student. There's a solution file, <laughs> very simple uh, example of a class. And then there's a test file and I can just quickly run these tests here. Um, so it put all of this inside of the auto GPT workspace, just like it did previously. And let me just run the, uh, what is it called? Bank account tests. And they run fine. Okay, so it seems decent. Um, the problem is it also <laughs> made a second folder where it started to do the same thing again, but it, kind of went off the rails so it made a decent solution to start but then it made another solution with tests and then it wrote uh, what was supposed to be the starter file that had a completed version 
also a whole bunch of other stuff that I, I don't, it wasn't supposed to be in here. It made sort of a, a user interface for it. And then this while loop, it, it just started going. <laughs> and this is why I stopped it um, because I was happy with what it did originally and it just kept going. So still, uh, you know, not perfect by any means. However, I would say impressive enough that it was able to find a problem, a bank account exercise, write the solution, write the starter code, write a text file, and write tests for it. The code is very, very simple. I chose this as a simple example. It is terrible if you try and ask it to write an application or something. Uh, it's still a ways away from doing that, but still pretty interesting, I think. So my overall impression is that it's uh, it's fascinating. Um, it's still very rough. It breaks all the time. It gets stuck in loops. It's expensive to run, and uh, it is not uh, the you know end all be all that some of these absurd blog posts make it seem like. Like it's the end of of your job as a developer, or that it's the you know the the best assistant in the world. It's not going to make you money, uh, or at least you're not going to make millions of dollars like some of these bloggers claim and TikTokers claim, but it still is pretty fascinating. And I think uh, it will continue to get better, but also it is the first of many similar tools to get popular. I'm sure there will be many of these agents, uh, these OpenAI or any other large language model powered agents that you can set up to, to run certain tasks. And finally, remember, I just showed the very basics. There's all sorts of other functionality you can uh, tap into. So you can add your Google API keys in, um, you can add GitHub APIs in, you can add image generation with stable diffusion, you can connect to other models with Hugging Face, um, you can use better vector database stores like Pinecone. You can add a backend with more memory instead of just a local memory. Uh, so there's a lot here that I did not touch on at all, but still a, a pretty interesting first taste of AutoGPT. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and again, if you're interested in learning more about GPT-4 and any of the OpenAI APIs, you can check out the course I just released on exactly those topics. It covers GPT-4, the chat API, building your own chatbots, uh, working with embeddings, doing sentiment analysis, working with Dolly and Whisper. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So check it out and uh, I'll see you next week.